Huggies. All right, everyone. Um, I'd like to give a big welcome to Assassin Dave, the legendary, um, legendary pro player over here. Um, I just want to say congratulations to you uh, on the NA tournament and um, how well it went. I've heard nothing but like great things um, coming from it. And um, I hope to see more tournaments um, coming from you. Um, what what was your um, what's your opinion about the tournament? Of like, of course you you think it's awesome because you created it. But um, what did you think about the teams and um, and um, how it was how it was organized and um, how everything went along? Did it go smoothly well, or? Yeah, yeah. Well. It could have, it could have come better. Obviously, like we could have done a lot better this time. The the biggest improvement that I'm proud of compared to the previous tournaments I hosted for ML is I'm able to get everyone paid. Our casters are paid. Well, I, I didn't get paid really. Oh. Okay. Um, it's my portion of the what's available. I mean, not saying my portion, but what's available of the leftover funding to do giveaways. That's why everybody really draw like seven Star Wars skins. Yeah, I've um, seen that. Yeah. And you know. Yeah, one, one skin is worth a hundred bucks, so that's a lot, a lot of money for <laughs> it's a lot. That's right. Uh, yeah, for um, but the I think the biggest improvement compared to before for me was from the hosting, from the organizing perspective, was to get everyone paid. Before we're just uh, fully on a volunteer basis, so you, like I just asked people to do stuff for free, you know, yeah. for the sake of the community, including me. And we're all doing stuff for free. Of course. But this time, at least, at least like our casters paid our. Uh, um, moderators are paid, uh, and then the graphics, everything. Graphic, like I, I have a graphic designer who helped me design some graphics, basic uh, templates, who are paid. Um, so, so I'm pretty happy about that. That's awesome. Uh, not a lot, obviously. They didn't get paid like I think the right proportion that they should be paid for the effort they put in, because everybody put a lot, put in a lot of effort. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks know, really, really professional. Like, um, it looked like any other movement. tournament that I've seen. Um, um, what I was gonna say was, um, it you 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 have to start somewhere with the uh, tournaments in NA anyway. So um, it's a good start, like a good um, like platform to build on um, and continue with. Yeah. Um, what did you think about? I don't want to start any trouble. What did you think about um, Gosu um, and the whole tournament and everything like that? Also not joining the tournament. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, BDK didn't join either. So, and it's not that they don't want to. Like, yeah, they they Gosu had was, had things, um, other things going on. Yeah, Gosu got Gosu and BDK got involved initially, and yeah. then um, they were not able to. So the roster have changes. So like North America, or let's say West overall, uh, except for except for South America, now have their OMPL. Like yeah, West same overall, that. it's more. More community-driven right. type of you know a tournament base. So I guess what I'm trying to say is um, because there's no officially paid tournament, so there's no prize pool, there's no incentive for ORs to actually sponsor to sponsor teams. Yeah, uh, the players are kind of like just everywhere, right? Like those who have players that that's playing with them today and then they're leaving to go to another team tomorrow like you probably see ghost of ultra play way more games with zane than yeah Daryl, exactly you know? so like with that being said it's not like they they just don't want to play with their team they're a scheduling problem and obviously they don't get paid so like they can't really spare like if they have to work they have to work so th their times are kind of restricted um so i mean ob obviously ho hopefully in the future we can get that more improved but right now like the, the players are so unavailable at a yeah. fixed time. So the, when the tournament happened, um, BDK wanted to join, but two of their key members weren't available initially. And the same for Gosu. Like, Gosu was in, but it turned out that two of their players just decided they, they're not going to be available. They have higher priorities uh, than committing to the team. So it, that, that also kind of just... Uh, <laughs> threw things off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, like they were the team really wanted to join. And hopefully, we can get things better eventually. Yeah, when I when I seen um, Zane pop up, the um, yeah. the view grand count, final. yeah, in the grand final, the view count went crazy. Everyone was, um, you know, going crazy for Zane. Um, um, yeah, Zane, see, Zane is a player, right? And obviously, we like to see uh, like 
big influencers, big cat, uh, big players, uh, good players in North America uh, to be playing those tournaments. Like, and Zane wanted to play in those tournaments. And yeah. I, I would rather watch Zane play in the tournament than have him as a caster. Yeah, so same. It was, for her, it's yeah, awesome. for him to be a caster, uh, he's gonna be a gas caster. But the when I explain to some of the players or some of the viewers who who are talking to me, say, Dave, uh, why are you using new casters? So you saw like we have two. Yeah, uh, very I've seen uh, two young, up and coming uh, casters. Yeah. Yeah, girl casters. I'm like, why are you using new casters? The reason why we use new casters is because, like, we want. I want to develop Western uh, community for ML into more professional, at least like semi-professional in a way. So, like, we need we need a stock of casters. Like, we need some, you know, backups. We need numbers. Yeah. Right now, we don't have any casters available for this game who are ready to go to cast the game who had a ca like capability because a lot of people think if you just be able to talk like when mm -hmm. i first started casting i thought okay i talk on my stream <laughs> all the time like i must know how to cast yeah but when i cast it, it was the vocabulary like when team fight actually happens you just be like oh you oh, don't know what uh, to say oh. yeah you, you actually don't know what to say the whole vocabulary is completely different so when the <clears throat> like when young when our new caster come in like have to they, they were training they were practicing every night they're putting a lot of effort and then when some other people come in and throw a lot of hate at them, like I just feel bad because they, yeah, they obviously do not know how much effort goes in to be a good caster. And then like what we're trying to do is obviously like with limited amount of fun I can afford afford them, I just train them to get them better. Eventually, hopefully we can have better, um, more prepared casters for future tournaments. Like M3 is coming up, M3 qualifier for North America is coming up, um, more community tournaments for the West is coming up. So uh, we'll obviously want to get more casters involved. I honestly thought they did a, an, an amazing job. Um, I've tried to cast like viewer games before just on my stream and that's even hard for me. Um, and when I, when, cause I've noticed too, cause when I, I was streaming the tournament as well, I noticed yeah. too that some people, um, you know, were throwing a little bit of hate towards them. And I was, I just wanted to say like, they're doing their best job that they could and they're probably doing a better yeah. job that anyone of us could um with the, with the you know limited time of preparation that they had um but and not and, and it being their first ever casting so um yeah props yeah. to them and props to you for finding um some good casters for the tournament thank you but props uh, to you for for uh spreading awareness for the tournament no thank worries you. man honestly uh, it's my pleasure honestly um but to you, the uh, legend Dave, I want to ask um, here a couple of questions. What? Who yeah. is your favorite hero in ML? All My time. My favorite hero? Yeah, well, all time. I want to say Hanzo, but yep. this hero is so... Um, He's been... <laughs> it, it's so, what do you call it, situational. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say Hanzo is bad. It's, it's just like, it's so situational. Uh, people, I like... I was known for grinding Hanzo. Like everybody yeah. uh, watched me yeah. for a long time for playing Hanzo. I was first known to play Hayabusa, um, one trick Hayabusa, and then I played Hanzo. Um, so melee assassins, I like I like all assassins like a lot, most of them. But Hanzo, spe especially in the current meta, it's kind of weird because most assassin counters him. Yeah, right. Uh, Ling, Hayabusa, uh, Karina, anyone like like literally everyone uh, except for Saber. Like Saber. everyone except for Saber kind of counters. <laughs> yeah. Because Saber, Saber has a hard time reaching Hanzo, because Hanzo's going to be staying on the, there on the tower all the time. So, or far back, right? So Saber has a hard time reaching his body before you get a, like a huge beating. And if Saber uh, goes uh, in and tries to kill you, he's, he's pretty much uh, kamikaze at that point. Yeah, and, and his damage is more like burst, like single target burst. So like, he, but if you use that on the shadow, he has no damage. If you try to get to you, you, you pretty much know like he's coming for you, right? It's not like... Um, like if you send your shadow you, like into the bush and you saw him, like you're not gonna move. You know, yeah. you're gonna try to move your body. So it's really hard for like Hanzo. On, on, the only easier assassin Hanzo go against is Saber. Actually, Hanzo counter Saber in other ways. Saber counter most of other assassins. It's kind of like a love triangle. You know, <laughs> Hanzo counter Saber and Saber counter everybody else and everybody else counter Hanzo. Like that's how it is. So uh, I like Hanzo, but then I don't pick it that much. It's only just a situational he, pick, right? Yeah, it's solo, it's solo queue pick. I mean, because I play mostly solo queue. Yeah, me too. And if too. I play solo queue, I have to wait for last pick. I want to make sure their jungler is not some kind of, is not generally like another assassin. Then I make sure I don't just die for free. You know what I mean? What what heroes do you love seeing when you're playing Hanzo? 
What what's well, food? What enemy? what is yeah? What on enemies? What's your food? Oh, easy. Like I just mentioned, saber. Right? Saber, if you yeah. Pick saber jungle. If you pick Eudora mid. Eudora. Uh, Oof. Any any marksman on the side. Eudora is a really annoying hero. Right yeah, now. Eudora like, phobia. Really strong, really popular. Yeah, Eudora phobia. <laughs> that's a thing now. But then Hanzo comes with Eudora easily. See, like if I. There, are, I made tips and tricks videos talking about like yeah, how I'm, to I'm, dodge. Yeah, I'm actually playing that right now on, on the stream. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well. Um, cool. Come on. We've got that Let's on the... See. We've got the two the two videos next to each other. The two... Um, uh, me yeah, and you. I, I and mean, then... I wasn't... I was actually looking at the chat. I'm, I'm on our Twitch stream. Uh, I was looking at the chat, but I wasn't looking at the, the video. Wow, I thought you were just playing a gameplay. No, 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 we're playing some playing some of your stuff. We, we try to try to promote you as much wow, as we can, wow. man. Well, wow, thank you. Okay, so go, so what I was saying regarding tips and tricks, then the... Because the, I play so much, Hanzo, like the, 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 the lot of interactions I'm actually quite familiar with, especially going against Eudora. Like, if you go in, against Eudora, you have two ways to dodge all her skills. Like, your skill too. Like, the moment you see her, Eudora's gonna try to stun you, right? With your shadow, yeah. with your shadow. And then, if she's trying to stun you, and you're gonna try to use her skill too, she doesn't really have a lot of mobility, especially when she ran on the flicker. She has no mobility. Yeah, she can't get and away. You, yeah, you skill two on her, and that's, that can most likely dodge her skill too, her stun. And if she runs out of stun, she's complete then. Let's say if she stuns you, uh, in one shape or form, you're still gonna catch up to her, and in, on top of it, your skill one, like after your skill two, proc certain auto attacks, or your auto attack, uh, proc the passive for your skill one. And you can use your skill one. That's another way to dodge uh, her stuns, dodge her damage, and also dodge tower shots. Like when you're tower diving, you can go in auto attack, auto attack, auto attack, and then when the tower is about to kill your clone, you can use skill one or skill two to completely cancel the aggro on the tower. Uh, so there are many ways. So you lose aggro. Yeah. Mm, that's why I always get destroyed by uh, Hanzo's in tower. <laughs> Yeah, he, her, his skill one lose uh, aggro's from the tower because it, it makes him uh, untargetable. So, so like you can go in with your skill two and skill one. Like I, I usually when I play Hanzo now, I don't really engage with skill two because it's so easy to dodge. And then I use that as a tool to either dodge skills or dodge tower aggro or straight up as a second initiation. So I'll, I'll use my ultimate and I'll run run to the person like to the melee range and start all attacking. And if, especially when I know this person has a dash or flicker. Like if I saw an uh, enemy has, let's say, um, Clint, right? She oh, ha he has one Clint. dash. Yeah. And then one, da one dash is done. Right After that, he's gone. He doesn't have any mobility. He except for maybe he has flicker, but a lot of Clint now play jungle with retreat. Yeah, so retreat he has Clint. one dash. Yeah. And then he used that one dash, he's done. So what I'll do is I'll just go up and try to dodge this dash if you're gonna use it. If he doesn't use it, he try to use use this dash to dodge my skill too. I just walk up and start all attacking. And usually when I play Hanzo Jungle, I have breath buff. The moment I, I land my first all attack, he's slow to death, right? He cannot move anymore. And then I have my retro on top of it. When I play Hanzo, I take the jungle emblem that enhances my retro by 20%. Uh, it, it has my retro slow by 20%. You know the blue retro? Oh yeah, the blue retro, the ice retro, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ice retreat. Yeah. So that one, there's an emblem that allows you to enhance that, the jungle emblem, by 20% additional slow. So if you use that one, they literally don't move. They, they, they kind of get rooted in place. They kind of just walk, but they're not really walking. And you just walk up to them and start all attacking. So when they use their dash or whatever, then I use my skill to the second second engage, uh, reposition. Okay. Yeah, we use my skill. And, and, and then to make sure I get my stacks and use, and then I always use all attack use skill one to finish it off. So, uh, that's why, like, this is how you maximize your damage with Hanzo. But still, even knowing a lot of, knowing all those detailed intricacies or interactions, I still don't use Hanzo all the time. Like, I, if I don't get last pick, um, I usually don't use Hanzo. You know, like, I, if, if the, if the, my random teammates don't, don't swap me, and I, I was forced to, like, first pick, second pick, or anywhere in between, or if I just don't know, if I'm not certain who the enemy jungler is, then I'll just pick either Hayabusa, Lane, Saber, like those assassins. Ha, yeah, because um, easily countable if they have the picks on you. Yeah. If they pick Lane, you're done. Like if they pick Lane or Fanny and you play Hanzo, you're done. There's nothing you can do. Just you're going to be useless all game. How? Okay, here's. I've been getting destroyed by Fannies lately. So I, I'm a main um, Atlas. And whenever yeah. my team. Whenever I show Atlas, they always just send me up. Um, most of the time, I don't want to 
show my tank so I don't get put up so Diggy doesn't get chose or like a an assassin yeah. that can yeah. you know easily escape um, Atlas. Um, I've tr I, like I use I used to use Kufra, but I just yeah, can't I fine. just can't anymore. <laughs> like I what I, do don't, you mean? I don't know why, but um, Fanny's still so hard to just uh, beat early game. <laughs> Fanny. Yeah, Fanny's so hard to beat early game. Well, when... Kufa counters Fanny. You know, you just learn her skill too. Yeah, and with she the comes ball. In. With the ball. Yeah, and you're good to go. Well, uh, okay. So, I just want to add one more point to what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, one, of, one of your monitor was asking, Black Panda was asking about like, uh, what, what tank works with Hanzo. Oh, and yes. Animation. Yeah, who supports um, Hanzo the best. Uh, it, it, for Hanzo, it's, it's not really about tanks. It's never about tanks for Hanzo. Hanzo doesn't really need um, your mid lane to do much. For Hanzo, the biggest the biggest plus that you want is Silent win. Like, if a Silent loses, right. it, it, you're going to be really hard. Because what happens is, if it, if Silent loses, their Silent's going to try to do something, right? Like, yeah. I mean, what else going to do? They won the lane. They're going to try to roam around the map. Like, what, like, and the enemy has a Hanzo. What do you think they're gonna do, right? They're gonna be just trying to look around for your body. I, I'm and, so, and they, I'm so glad you said this because I was gonna ask this question yeah. too. It, it's actually not related to tank that much because Hanzo's mainly on his own. Obviously, if I have a really good tank player who engages and stuff, yeah, uh, sure. But see, the thing about Hanzo is like I can clear jungle so fast. I'm the fastest at clearing among all the assassins because like I can eat a camp of free, right? Like it doesn't take me any time to to hit like a, the first buff. Yeah, exactly. I can exactly. use my retro to do other stuff. So I can roam a lot faster than my mid lane than my support. I don't need them to help. What I need, and then to be honest, if I play with a uh, trio, I want a mid lane. I don't. I don't need to really need a support. I must. I want my support to do whatever he wants, right? Yeah. But I need if if my if I have a support, then I want a support to follow mid to make sure we win mid. Like then that's it. I don't. I don't want my support to follow me. Yeah, you want your support, support with the me. mage. Yeah. Yeah, I want support to go with the mage. Yeah. So, but mainly, the most important thing for Hanzo is the silent to win. If a silent loses, it's going to be really hard for you. Yeah. That's, yeah. um, I, whenever, whenever I'm playing and I say to the off lanes, like, we need to push because we don't have, like, they, the other team has map dominance over us and they can do whatever they want. They can go into our jungle, low health and take anything they want and kill us as well uh, but if we have the lane you know dominance you know we're able to take our jungles and you know actually get farm and stay on top and like still compete with the other team um yeah but they just they just say no it's the jungle's fault like you're the sh like that they'll say you know they'll always blame jungle or they blame tank <laughs> it's so it's so funny but when when mobile legends is a it's a, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, objective game. Yeah. Sure, you can go out and get the most kills, but if you don't have the objectives done, if you're not getting, you know, the turtles, the lord, and um, the farm, or even hitting your waves, missing your waves, yeah. I see a lot of people do that um, in my server. They just, um, they leave their lane and they miss their wave and they wonder why they're so, like, underleveled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, it's... you gotta win lane. You got you got you gotta. The first thing you gotta do. That's why lane priority is so important. That's also why, like a lot of people don't understand why we we have tier lists. Like when we when we talk about certain tier being bad or good, it's not really bad or good. Especially when I do MPL like uh, analysis, like when yeah. I analyze pro games. When I say hero bad or good, I, I never meant like individually. It's all in a relative scope. Uh, Cause it's all about lane prior. Like, can you win lane? Like, is yeah. this hero the absolute best choice compared to, like, in this pool of available heroes? So a lot of times when when Popo and Kuba first came out, uh, and then there when first came out, a lot of people started playing Popo and Kuba support, especially MTL. Mm. They were doing it, and at that, that time, the, the other tank wasn't really nerfed. So all the other tanks are really really good. Like, yeah. Grok were, were really good. Uh, Kufa were really good. It was not nerfed, and then. I remember at that time when people were talking about um, like how Popo and Kuba is being a godly tank, and I started making fun of them. I was like, "Well, no, you, how can you compare that with Grok, right?" Like, yeah, I, exactly. Before Grok was nerfed, yeah, and his skill one was doing the same amount of damage, and he was so tanky. What happens is I would just use my skill one, walk up to you, I would, I would eat all your traps without being <laughs> quad controller, right? I would basically waste all your traps, and then if I see you, I can just 
if I I can basically check bush, and you can't as Popo and Koopa, right? Yeah. If you walk up to me, I'll, I'll probably kill you. Initially on you, my team will kill you because you're squishy. It doesn't matter how tanky you build. Popo and Koopa is still not a tank overall, right? Yeah. He's a marksman. That's your building tank. And then, so it's all relative of what's available. What are the best options in the current meta? It's not really like saying one hero is bad or good. So uh, just to add on what you're saying there. It's on lane, it's not about lane priority. Like same as all the fighters. It's not about like, it's not about like Argus being good or bad. It's just like, okay, can Argus win against this person? Can Argus win against that person uh, in this situation? If you go, if you pick an Argus to an enemy side has a Paquito, uh, you're gonna get kind of bullied in lane. Yeah. You know, like, and then if you get bullied in lane, Argus gonna, sorry, the Pukuito is gonna rotate to the river to get the lethal wonder, and the Pukuito can invade with their side to go to the enemy blue side and invade. And then you're gonna, your jungle loses your, you lose the first hurdle, you lose the first objective. By the time you have like uh, 3,000 gold, your Pukuito, the enemy Pukuito is sitting at 5,000. One item ahead of you, you, lo you just lose the game. It's, so it's, it's, all, it's, it's, all, relative. it's all relative, yeah. It just, it's just all yeah. snowballs, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I was just playing a game just uh, I, I, t I turned my mobile legends off because we, we we had a Benny on the other team side lane and then we ended up going with a um, Wait, who? with a Benny there was a Benny on the oh, uh, oh, yeah, Benedetta. Benedetta yeah Benedetta on the okay. other team side lane and then we had a um, a marksman to go side lane yeah. and Benny's yeah. always gonna always going to eat the marksman 100% of the time yeah um, but ever, I, I, th I think that's one of the, like in, in my server, I don't know about other servers, but I think the biggest problem is people using the heroes that they just want to use and not yeah. looking at the, the enemy lineup and you know, what's good in this situation. Um, but yeah, what's, uh, what's the, what's the most mistakes you see people make commonly? As a well, as a jungler, if you if you if you're not playing jungle and you see them in jungle, well, well before I answer you that, answer you on the mistakes for jungler makes. I do want to add one point to what you said there. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, regarding the player picking whatever they want. Yeah. So Mobile Legend overall is a pretty casual mobile game. Yeah. So like people play like I used to um, feel frustrated, especially when I play solo queue and then I just have first pick Mia, <laughs> first pick Canopy or whatever. First pick Layla. It, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does kind of frustrate me, but at the same time, like over time, I just understand, I just get to the point where I understand that that's just what it is. I still kind of uh, grudge about it on stream. I was yeah. like, ah, another yeah. me epic, another Hannah B. But then, like, that's it. That's the extent of what I'm going to say about that specific thing. Like, because usually, I mean, you, in the end of the day, you have to kind of accept this is how it is. It's a casual game, and then people are going to pick whatever makes them happy. Um, that's right. What, what we need to do is. Like after they pick those dog, and you, you you can't you can't convince people picking yeah, them to make them happy. Yeah, obviously you can't and tell think, them what to do. Yeah, and then it's their game too. Like they they're obviously like they have a right to play over yeah. whatever. Yeah, they're playing for happy. fun. So, it's a, it's it's a game. Yeah, they're playing for fun. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, we, like our logic has always been like if you want to play for fun, why not just play in classic? classic. Right? Why not? Run, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why not run rank? Why 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 try to run like somebody's rank? Somebody's trying to grind grind here. Yeah. And then, yeah. The, the thing is, it still happens, and then there's nothing you can do to, to, to fix it. Yeah. And then what you can do, though, as, as, a, as a player, I think it's just try to find the best situation, uh, uh, best way out. So what I do is, if my team first pick, let's say I want to play Hanzo, like my stream title is Global Hanzo. Global Hanzo, Hanzo yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And then you know what happened? It's, and then first pick, uh, my first pick, first game, first pick, somebody picked Layla on my team. So <laughs> in that... If that if that happened, yeah. like even though my title is gl like Global Hanzo Grind, I can't do that anymore. So that's particular game, I'll be like, oh crap. But then what I will do is I will instead of playing Hanzo that particular game, I will just go play Saber. Because the the thing about Saber is I can protect my marksman. So and I understand the win condition of that particular game. That part, if I have uh, like Layla on my team, if Layla even though Layla is a really bad player. If I can get Layla farmed and then somehow make sure she doesn't die, we will win the game. If that makes if that makes it, yeah, if yeah. Makes if, if Layla gets, you know, I I used to I've played I think nearly seven hundred matches with Layla. If once Layla yeah. gets to like eleven minutes and if you don't kill her and if she gets her farm, it's she's game over. Everybody. She's got the yeah, biggest she range. Everybody. She's got the biggest range in the game. Uh, and if your team understands, 
the capabilities of Layla, it's, yeah. it's game over. Yeah, it is. It is. So instead of playing Hanzo, like and just lost, because if you get two really weak heroes, um, like your side again, like I said, Hanzo needed Silent to win. And if you pick Layla, most likely your Silent gonna lose, right? Yeah. So, so and then they're gonna they're gonna free roam your jungle and they're gonna lose the game. And the viewers don't really understand like why you lost and just say, oh, you're a noob. But then what happened is <laughs> instead of doing that, and I what I find what I, what I end up finding out, realizing is if I pick Saber, and I constantly gank that Layla lane, and I do my best. But Layla is absolutely dog. Yeah. Just keep on dying. Even in my before my first rotation finish, my first wave finish, uh, jungle clear finish, and she just die over and over again. That's different. That then you just kind of accept fate. Oh shit! You know this game is over. <laughs> Go next. But then if the, if that's not what happened, if Layla just didn't die, and you constantly gank Layla's lane, which is what I do all the time, uh, then you're gonna get yourself the best chance of winning. In fact, a lot of times I will play against play with some random Layla's, and you watch just win rate. Win rate is really horrific. And then we'll still win because the win condition is the same. As long as Layla gets farmed, and then doesn't matter what she builds, if she gets farmed, if she has farm, <laughs> tank Layla. She's build default items, she's still gonna hurt people like, again. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Like, and then and the thing about picking Saber is it's gonna protect Layla to the maximum extreme. If the enemy has Ling or Hayabusa or any of the assassins who can possibly kill Layla, you just pick Saber and just sit on next to Layla and you don't move. Let Layla do the job. Yeah. And then you hide in the bush. Sit the moment Ling jumps in, yeah, you, all, you ultimate. Layla all attack that guy dead. They instantly die, right? So, instantly, like if that instantly die, if that per assassin instantly die, then you know, okay, well, then no one else can kill Layla. Then you just do whatever you need to do to win the game. So, um, that's something I want to add. But regarding what you said on the mistakes on jungler, uh, I saw one of your uh, viewers actually asked a question regarding level four rotation in jungler. Yes. Uh, I I wouldn't say I don't. I wouldn't say I, I actually try to. Summarize the biggest mistake for jungler, but there are a few tips. That yes, you can, tips. You can yeah, use. tips would be awesome. Yeah. So if you're gonna play jungle, your first like what I do right now, what I recommend people do with jungler is start at the same side. Doesn't matter who you jungle with. Start on the same side with the lethal wonder. So lethal wonder usually spawn randomly on, on each side of the river. I've right? learned that from watching you. Yeah. So so instead of starting always at the blue side or always the red side, um, let's say I'm playing high the jungle. Yep. Like I can start red or blue. It doesn't really matter which I, which side I start. If I start blue, I'm gonna have more energy to spam my sp uh, spells. Yeah. If I start red, I'm gonna have more damage to do my jungle faster. So both of their benefits, right? It doesn't really matter which way I start. Yeah, exactly. But if, if I see a lethal wonder is starting at the red side of the jungle, yeah, I can go I can go take the rep off without using my retribution, mm -hmm. and I'll finish in time, and head to the um, the lethal wonder still with my retry ready, and I I can try to contest the the lethal wonder. But don't die for it. Cause sometimes you, when you get to higher elo and then you you play like <laughs> solo queue, a lot of times like, I get extreme bad luck and I'll get you see a lot of mid people lane. die there. Yeah, like I, I'll get support, mid never go there. My support will usually go to the silent with the Hanabi. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so their team will somehow always have three people mid in Kuda jungle to contest that. If that's the case, try to avoid confrontation. Like if you know, like let's say by level two I'm Hayabusa. Yeah. I have skill two and skill one. And I see, I see they have three people there. Like I'm, tr I'm gonna try to use skill two dash in, skill one retry to steal the lethal wonder and dash back. But I wouldn't try to contest them or fight them. Yeah. If I if I uh, see that um, um, they, that's if I see they have three people there, right? If I don't see anyone there, I'll just walk up and try to hit the lethal wonder and get it with my retribution, secure it with my retribution, and come back to fight a uh, farm my entire jungle get level four. Another thing that's really important about jungler is don't try to force turtle that much. Especially when you play solo queue. If you force turtle, like the turtle comes after two minutes. Yeah. It's good to take it, but if you play with solo duo trio, it's actually not important to get it. But because turtle is a team objective. Giving up giving like it doesn't really give you that much benefits individually. Gives it's more you a team. for the team. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you spend a lot of energy trying to get that turtle, uh, worked on it, blah blah blah, and then you come here and have four people, you're by yourself. You just wasted all your time where you could have just gone through some farm. Got the blue, get the um, red, get your jungle. Yeah. Individually, when you play solo queue and duo, trio, or whatever, it's a lot more productive if you focus on yourself, like get yourself farmed. Play selfish. Even though it sounds bad, but solo queue, duo queue, trio, you gotta have the mindset. You gotta get farmed. Gold is number one thing in the game. Like, one 100%. thing if you watch the stream, his number one, uh, his number one quality has always been like when I summarize stream. His number one quality, why he's able to play hyper so well, 
is he know how to farm. Even though his team is behind, if you look at overall gold, he will still be on top of the leaderboard. He's got his objectives. Match. He's got a, his objectives, and he and he gets them done. Yeah, he, he farms. Like yeah. he farms really quickly. He doesn't leave a single camp. He just farms. Now, with that being said, it doesn't mean like you you constantly farm without stop. Like yeah, you exactly. got to know when to when to yeah gank when to roam yeah when to gank. But then um, when I well, I'm mainly talking about the river objectives. Anything that's like, Lethal Wonder is easy to steal. Right? Yes. Lethal Wonder is so easy for you to kill, it doesn't really hurt you back, you know? And then you just you just take it. Like, if you can steal it, steal it. If you can take it, take it. But for River Objective, for Turtle, for Lord, don't force that stuff. You know, if you force that stuff and your team doesn't help you, you frustrate the hell out of you, and you don't get anything done, you know? So it's just counterproductive. Instead, if you just focus on farm, focus on split pushing, it's gonna give you a lot more benefits. Now, uh, one thing with the, with the Lord, I uh, just, Bring me to another question. Um, so, if your team is is down, no towers left, um, do you give the other and do you give the other team Lord while you stay in base, or do you try contest? Well, um, depends. If it's after twelve minutes and it's enhanced Lord, yep, enhanced Lord. You really Lord. don't want to give that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you really don't want to because it. I mean, at that point, if you just keep on giving objectives, you might as well just surrender. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like that, like I don't, I don't see. Okay, so for those objectives, so ML as a mobile, like the the Lord itself, kind of really gives a huge lead, especially yeah. for the enhanced Lord after twelve minutes. The enhanced Lord has the push, the push move, the charge thing to the yeah, tower. To, so yeah, yeah, runs into the tower. So it's almost guaranteed that it's gonna take down the tower. Like they only have like high ground towers, and you have enhanced Lord. That that that's really gonna give you the the huge advantage. Most likely, it's like when the pro teams do it, like they just end the game with it, you know, because they. They, they, they know how push. to manage wave yeah. properly, so they have many waves coming to your base at the same time. Once a wave, once one side is a wave with a huge ass lord coming in, ready to charge your base, and then the side is two two huge uh, lord enhanced minion waves coming in. That's also really hard to kill. So which one do you defend? So you, you put enemy side in a pickle, like in a pickle jar, where they have to decide. <laughs> okay, do we send help? Do we send two people here on the bottom side and three people there to defend lord? And then what about people in mid? How about we send three people to defend lord and one people mid and one people bottom? Then the enemy is like it's not gonna you know be separate like that because they don't care. So if I'm on the other side, I'm able to manage my wave and make sure all three waves come in at the same time with the Lord charging in. I will then force five people to go in one lane. And doesn't matter which lane I go to, you only have three to two people defending that lane because yeah. you have to distribute your members right to make sure you don't lose all your high ground towers. And that's gonna give me the advantage. And if you do that, I'm either, so basically uh, it's always upside for me. I'm either gonna take your take your tower. Or I'm just gonna kill your entire team and end the game. Yeah, so wipe the it team, depends on like, split. yeah, you're all split. So depending on how you how you manage your, um, I mean, how, but that's competitive. For a solo yeah. queue, trio queue, duo queue, for regular people playing ranked like you and I, when we are doing when we are playing games and then when when Lord is coming up, you really just want to rally your team to contest that because that that Lord usually still give you a huge lead. Even the normal Lord, the regular Lord, before 12 minutes. Statistically, Lord you will give you about two thousand gold advantage. Even the Lord doesn't give you that much gold, but after Puts you get you the Lord, top. the minion waves, the the advantage the minion waves able to provide you, uh, pushing towers, and then because you have lane pressure, you can now invade a jungle. Overall, what we've seen is every time you have a Lord, the team will the if they are behind, they're gonna shrink that difference by two thousand gold. If they're ahead, they can extend that gold difference by two thousand gold. If you have an enhanced Lord, you just end the game. So. It, it just it just depends on what lord you have, but the enhanced lord you really don't want to get. The 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 regular lord if you're behind and you just want to stay in base and hide, farm, that's fine. But after 12 minutes, force you that really you want to rally really your team. rally your team to yeah. force that lord to, to, to try get that. it, yeah, to contest it. Yeah. Now, you, but sometimes if you, if you lose it again, if you're the only person who reacted to it and your your people you usually have like four Layla sitting in base, then <laughs> then you you kind of. You kind of let it go also. You might try to steal it, but like if any team is smart, they're gonna have people camping in different bushes to zone. If they yeah. know you're not even contesting it, right? Then they probably have two people fighting the Lord and three people just zoning just waiting, somewhere yeah, hiding waiting the bush. For you. Yeah, so if you walk up, you're gonna die because you Dora one shot it, whatever. <laughs> then, so if you if you see that situation where your team just doesn't rally, then just leave it alone, right? Go split push, put some yeah. pressure on the map, you know, put, uh, like try to steal some resources away from them. Like yeah, that's so. all you can do, give yourself the best chance of winning. Like when I play my Hayabusa game, uh, when I solo, a lot of time I'll go 7-0, and eventually we'll still lose the game sometimes. But when I when I play Hayabusa, I don't focus on objectives at all. Right, I just focus on split pushing and fighting, like finding individual people who are left out. Yeah, and I kill them. 
So being, being the, this is how that it's offline about, assassin. Yeah. And then to answer the question for the Black Panda for I'm tank main, is the right move to contest or reset turtle? You can certainly do that. Um, but for, for tank, like my concept of tank, my number one, um, when I look at a tank player, my number one thing when I look at tank player is when when to do what. Like usually, like does he understand or does she understand when to do what? What I'm trying to say is, uh, and and one one of the the when to do what is when to hide in a bush and do nothing. That's actually one of the hardest things for people to, to act in the game, especially for tank players. It's not always um, good to show yourself. In fact, it's mostly counterproductive when you when you show yourself on the map. What, let, if I see, because uh, that minimap give me a lot of information on knowing numbers. Like, let's say if I'm in the jungle farming, turtle is up. I saw three of the enemy team members, maybe four. I, let's say I see I saw three. Like their their jungler, their support, and their obviously top laner sitting on top side. Turtle's bottom lane. They try to gank the top lane. I I will immediately go to turtle because at this point I know even if they try to come back, they won't come back in time. So yeah, if I solo turtle. I'll, tur I'll solo it. Yeah. But if you're a tank player and you show top, let's say if you're if you're a tank player and then right now I saw on the minimap, enemy only have their jungler and then their uh, top laner sitting top, try to gank the top lane. And uh, but I don't know where enemy jungler is. The chances are mostly if I'm a decent player, I won't start a turtle because the the support is going to be really annoying if you try to do turtle by yourself. Like imagine imagine enemy tank is a grog, and then like I'm a high boost, I try to do turtle. The fact that the time I'm not gonna try to use my ultimate on a freaking Grok initially because I'm not gonna do any damage, especially when he's sitting on next to, next to a freaking turtle. Now, if you're Grok coming in, you're hiding a bush, and I start walking to the turtle, and you saw me doing it, you can come in and hit me with skill one, right? And just yeah. and run back and come back and hit me with skill one, and I'll probably <laughs> be killed by then, right? If your if your melee come follow up a little bit, I'll just be dead. So hiding your position is very important. You also can give a lot of information if you hide your position. You can tell your team, you can give your team the information of where I am. If you hide in the bush next to the turtle, when the turtle shows up as a tank, and I just pulled up, right? Like I just, um, uh, to the turtle. And then you saw me and you didn't move because you're by yourself and you're waiting for your mid lane. That's a really good, that's a really good decision because you don't have any damage. Then you're waiting for your uh, mid lane to show up and then, then you can combo and do a lot more damage. Give me shredded or just give me kill straight up. Right? Like then that's, that's up to the tank. But if you're just hiding in the bush, it tells your team, hey, enemy jungler is coming to the turtle now, and maybe your jungler will react to that. Oh, uh, maybe I can, their jungler is at turtle, and then I just kill the top and maybe I can get this top, top tier one tower. Or can I make it, I'm playing lane, can I make the turtle in time because their jungler is at turtle. So the amount of information you're providing for your team is about hiding in the bush, in a key bush, you have to know where, which bush to hide at what time. You know, you can't just hide a random yeah, bush. Yeah, just hide in random you, bush. Hide bush. <laughs> yeah. Like you gotta you gotta hide at the bush that um, at an objective that your team's looking to ob obtain next, right? So let's say if your team is going to obtain the, the top tier one tower, yeah. A lot of tank players will try to go hit a tower along with the team, you know, try to push, right? Quote unquote. Yeah. But the if you look at like a co top competitive teams, the tank players when they're pushing towers, usually their player don't the tank player don't really go hit a tower. They'll hide. They'll move away from the tower and they'll hide in a bush right next to the tower. Yeah. They'll wait for the enemy to come, right? This provides information of where they are, like when they're coming, number one. Number two, it also provides possibility for engage. If your team is hitting a tower, and then let's say bottom tier one tower, and enemy team is trying to come from the tri bush to the bottom tier one tower you try to push, right? Yeah. And then you, you're, you're, you're already hiding in that tri bush, waiting for them to come. Then you can signal attack. Your team saw that signal and exactly. you're playing. They know they're coming, yeah. They know, and then they're gonna drop that tower and come to you. Then you're engaged on two, on, you knock up two people, three people, and you start using your skill two and ultimate on them. Guess what's gonna happen? Instant team team white, right? That's and that snowball begins. You win the game. So, for tank player, most of the time is not. Uh, you don't really have to aggro the objective. You just have to like. I personally just prefer tank hiding a bush, doing nothing, yeah, and wait for the right opportunity. But when the opportunity shows up, you still do nothing. You're just a bad tank, <laughs> right? Like, when I, like, like I see quite a bit of tank player. There's so many opportunities that I could have engaged, but they'd rather do nothing on the side. Like, they I don't just know what they're thinking. They're disconnected. No. Uh, like that's different. <laughs> they 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 say lag. The number one excuse in Mobile Legends, lag. Yeah, true. Lag. Yeah. Um. So. Oh. One, okay, one, I will take it away from the uh, tips and tricks. I just wanted, I, my cousin, he wanted me to ask, um, what was it like 
early on playing Mobile Legends at the start and like, um, you know, coming up with like Doggy and stuff like that. Um, what, what was it like? Yeah, what was it like? I don't know. I mean, I just wanted to do it for, for fun. <laughs> when I first joined uh, YouTube, I was in a pretty bad place, personally. Yeah. Because my, my startup has just been shut down by the, by the city. Yeah. And then, so, like, my business just failed. And I was, for a few months, I was not doing anything. I was, I was just sitting at home, like, not lost direction in my life. Because I, I, I was a civil engineer, right? So I quit my job as right. a civil engineer to do my, to do my startups. And then... Like, and the reason why I quit my job was because I was working, I was literally sleeping for three, four hours every day for like six months because wow. I was working on my startups and stuff. And then I was just not sleeping. Yeah. My mom was like, no, you can't do this. I was like, I don't want any money to, to eat. And so my family decided to support me. So go do your startup. Uh, so I, I quit my job right at the time. I said, okay, I'm going to do my startup and get some regular sleep. But then after everything's finished and we're about to launch, the city's like, no, you don't pass the health code for it. So no, your business is shut down. And, and then for three, four months, I was really, I, I wouldn't say I was depressed, but I, I just lost just motivation for yeah. everything. You know, like I, I lost direction. I just literally, I was. And I, I, that was the first time I experienced it. At that time, I didn't ex know I was in that mood. I just feel uh, down. You know, how, I didn't how, want to do anything. How, uh, how old were you at this uh, point? Uh, are you asking me to reveal my age? No, 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 no. Don't reveal your age. <laughs> uh, okay, so when I from college, I, I did a startup. <laughs> And then the, the whole point is, after that, uh, I was like, I'm gonna do something fun. I can't. I was reading books. Yeah. And then um, motivational books, Napoleon Hill books, and then they were telling me to to um, to get out of it, right? Start acting. Um, so I saw so like, what I'm gonna do. I was playing games at the time, and I just started playing Mobile Legends for a week, for a month. I mean, yep. for a month, because uh, I was not doing anything, anyways. I'll play Mobile Legends on the side. I'll play for about a month. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be a YouTuber, you know, or make videos for this game. And you know, I was looking up YouTube. There's not too much content for this game, and then I'm a new content creator. I just wanna do do stuff for the game uh, for fun. I didn't expect it to go, but you had to go anywhere. To be honest, I didn't know the game was gonna be big. In fact, when I first started for for a few months. Uh, my view was around like 20, 30 per video. I think for the first two months. Damn, like, look it at was you that, now. It. That, that was it. <laughs> you know, it, was, it wasn't going any higher. And all of the 20 views, like I think 15 of them came from me. Because when I first started, <laughs> I would open up 15 different tabs of the same video. Just open it, close it, open it, close it, open it. It all come from me. So uh, it didn't, I didn't get any views. And then, um, so I don't know. Like I didn't have any particular feeling regarding starting early. Uh, one thing I do regret was obviously leaving the game because I didn't know like, yeah. the game is gonna be the size be around, it is. yeah, yeah. And then obviously, like when I first played the game, I was playing for fun, making comments for it. I, was, I liked the game a lot, and then I, but I really like competitive. I actually played tournaments. You know, I was a pro player for Arena Valor. So when Tencent approached me regarding Arena Valor, I uh, said I'm gonna do esports, and I thought it was a good thing for our community because before then I hosted four tournaments for NA already myself and the developer had no intention of helping me you know like and they invited me to go to indonesia to join uh one to observe one of the tournaments the first tournament ever hosted oh wow the msc yeah so i went to jakarta and that was a nice trip by the way that was That's the first awesome. time i traveled because because yeah it was awesome and then it was fun and I, I got a chance to meet their ceo and then asked a lot of questions regarding the esports plan for north america and stuff because they had a tournament for us for sea now and i said well can are we gonna have tournaments for nay the, sh the answer I got at the time was no, straight no, just no. We're not gonna do it. Nope. And th they said they didn't say it in a bad way. They said it because they they couldn't have, they couldn't do it. At they the couldn't time. justify the decision from yeah. a business standpoint, you know. Because like, because our viewers just we don't have that many players here in the West, and then yeah. it makes sense for them from a business standpoint. And then I was like, okay. So when I came back, I was really demotivated. Uh, <laughs> for the North American uh, esports scene. But it didn't really affect me, it didn't really det uh, deter me or anything. It's just at the same time though, Tencent told me that we're gonna have pro scene for Arena Valor. And Team Immortals contracted me, like the one of the biggest org in North America, right? They, they're, they're league org for a uh, franchise org for Overwatch, that like one seat for the Overwatch was like $10 million or something. It was super expensive in the franchise. So that org is huge. And they they were contracted with Tencent to do esports for Arena Valor, and I, I was in it. I was the team team captain for that, Damn. so I was pretty happy. <laughs> but it turned out that game Arena Valor just never took off because uh, Riot put so much sanction on them. Like Riot didn't want Tencent to provide to promote their game, 
in the US. Riot killed you know? it. Yeah, Riot kind of killed it. And also, it's the way how they promote their own game. So what happened is because of that my channel kind of just died because my contract with Immortals also kind of forbidden me from doing content for ML. Oh, so okay. After, yeah, after I signed a contract with uh, with uh, uh, Immortals to be their team captain and play Arena Valor Pro, I was only allowed to play Arena Valor. For how so, long? I mean, at least at least on stream. What? For how long? For um, as long as the contract stands. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so like, for I think I did that for more than half a year, seven, eight months. And then, uh, like, I, my channel was already kind of just like all Arena Valor content, so we're not getting too much views. And then Tencent decided, uh, Dave, why don't you come back to China and work for us? You know, so that's what I did. But I did. I went to China, learn how to cast, uh, learn how to make contents for about a year, which completely kind of killed my channel. But if I you see, if I never moved to play pro for Arena Valor, I, well, I was one of the first movers. That was actually a really good opportunity. I just didn't see it that way. This is also my first time. Like joining YouTube for Mobile Legend was my first experience ever with content creation. You know, I have to. Learn how to make videos from YouTube. In fact, I used a, a really, really crappy uh, video editing software initially. But I like because I didn't know how to do it. I don't know. I've never used Adobe software. I've never used any, none of that. Um, it was just a. Uh, it was just kind of interesting how everything went uh, with the first time experience thing. But it's it's never it's never uh, something that was particularly what do you call have some special feelings for it was just something that I had to do when I was at a really bad, bad really bad situation personally and then I wanted to do it to get me out of it so it kind of safe saved me in a way um, but yeah look at you now you've um, you've honestly come a really really long way um, like I've I've heard countless people say I learned playing mobile legends by watching assassin Dave um, and like I did, my cousin did. Um, yeah, man, you were, honestly, man, you are um, you're awesome, bro. Um, Aw, thank you. <laughs> you're a really you're a really good content creator, and on top of that, you're a um, you're a great Mobile Legends um, player. And um, I hope nothing but the best for you, man. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. Honestly, I I can't wait to see what's in the future for Dave and. Um, Wait, hold on. I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. So, what's your plan for your channel? Like, like, are you gonna to focus on Mobile Legends, or is is that um, is that your long term plan? Mm, yeah, I wanna like Mobile Legends is the main game of the channel. Yeah. Um, but I will like I love every MOBA game. Like I'll play I, see, I, I, I played Heroes of New Earth, Dota. Um, oh play... no way! You play Hero of New Earth. Yeah, oh my God. I was a Predator main. Oh my God, Predator <laughs> main! God damn, <laughs> Predator main. Predator main, oh. bro. I, I played <laughs> I that when it first came game. out. When that first came out, I was I, I was playing it straight away. Uh, I played yeah. the beta and everything. God damn, I was I was uh, one of the OG Hero of New Earth players. Oh really? I play yeah, I played Dota and then uh, my. Okay, when I first came to the States, uh, my roommate was playing Dota. He introduced me to Dota, and when Hero of New Earth came out, he introduced, he introduced me to Hero of New Earth. He was like, uh, Dave, go play Hero of New Earth. Uh, and I was like, what is Hero of New Earth? It's, it's basically Dota, but then with better graphics. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so I did, and, and then I, I, was, I, was, I loved Panda. I was playing Panda. I was oh, Panda, Panda was so good. Man. Yeah, it was so fun. That game was so fun. So sad that they kind of killed it. Yeah, but, I uh, I was watching it on stream recently. It just looks, it looks just, it looks a little bit sad, you know. Um, yeah. It's a big European scene. Um, for really? Heroes it's still of big Europe. European scene? Yeah, big European scene. Oh. I don't really see any other people streaming it though. Yeah, yeah. The, the game is just kind of. I was in a. There was a. Uh, I, I was uh, even a clan leader. I think it was the second biggest clan. At oh the time. wow! I was clan, clan officer. Yeah, because I because I, I was I was playing so much uh, uh, panda. <laughs> I think they liked my panda. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. And then uh, I, was, I was actually a clan officer. The whole thing was interesting. I'm glad to. You're the first person I know. <laughs> who was in your yeah. You too. I don't know anyone nobody, else that played. Nobody, nobody played that game. Such a good game. Um, yeah, it was so popular when it first came out. 
And yeah. it was by an indie company, which added points for me, because I, I like a, indie a game developed by indie companies. Yeah. Yeah, Monster, it's a PC game, just to answer that question. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think of Pokemon Unite? What's your first Yeah, what, what's thoughts? my thoughts on Pokemon Unite? I'm, yes. gonna, I'm gonna play it. So what happens is my main channel will still remain like making mobile legend content. Yep. But but uh, Pokemon Unite, I'm gonna play it. Like right now I'm playing on Switch and I, I hate a Switch. Me I too, man. To I, I need the mobile. Yeah, I need the mobile. But mobile is coming out in September. Yeah. And there's gonna be a lot more um, uh, community building event. So, so right now I'm contracted by... Uh, I'll be a community manager for Trovo. Do you know Trovo? Yeah, Trovo, yeah. Yeah, it's a, so what happened was I got to know more about their platform because they, the, I actually built a really good friendship with one of the dev members. With Stone, the, right? The, with Stone? Uh, yeah, Stone Crypto. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I, when I went to LA to meet him, uh, he, ta he told oh, me you met him. more. I met him in, oh, real, that's part, awesome. in real life. Yeah, they actually gave me an award. I have here, I have a. Hey, show, 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 show. Uh, they gave me this award. Damn. And I didn't, I didn't know I got it. It's so cool. It's like you open up the box, it's like all oh, like freaking. <laughs> here, let me let me show you the award. I just got this yesterday. And then um oh, so so what brand happened new. is Yeah, it's like a it's like a stone. Oh wow, that's so good. And has a has a trouble metal that's it comes the out. Stone. Yeah, like look. That's Assassin Dave. 10,000 followers. 10,000 followers. Congratulations, okay, so, man. So what happened was, I'm a, I'm a, they contracted me as a, like a part-time. Yeah. So what happened is, what I would do for them is community manager. I would do events for them. And also, okay. like, yeah. And then we are planning to do a lot of Pokemon, because they're, they're, Pokemon is also developed by Timmy Studio. Yeah. Which is, which is Tencent company. Tencent, yeah. Tencent. So what happened? Yeah, what happens is they're gonna do, and then Trove was a Tencent company. Oh, Their really? Trove was Tencent? Just, yeah, Trove was Tencent. It's not just a streaming platform. Ah. The, there are, there's much more strategic value for the platform itself, because Tencent want to build their own gaming community in the West, right? Because yeah. they already dominated China. And then they want to have a community center, like a hub for the West. So the way how they to structure it right now, from my understanding, is they want to use streaming platform the way to do that to put all the to connect all the community connect all the players all the streamers together yeah so that's going to tie it up into their bigger ecosystem in the future and and then when i heard that i was like okay that's that's, that's awesome obviously, yeah yeah <laughs> that's a lot more than, than I, what i knew so so what happened is uh like we're we're gonna host a lot more community events and tournaments and obviously actually sponsor um give community builders like a lot of funding like creator funding so they can create games uh, with a little bit less, like in the, in the early, in the beginning stages, with a little bit less stress. So, I'm working with them on those programs. But yeah, Pokemon Unite is going to be a, a game that I'll uh, working on. I'll be actively working on. My main channel will still be doing Mobile Legends content. Mobile Legends, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not going to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I made, a, I made a mistake. Until I see exactly where the mobile thing is going, because what I realized, uh, Combat Cat Gaming. Wait, yeah. what else did I call you, by the way? Oh, you can call me Combat, CCG, Combat. Oh, yeah. CCG. Yeah. So, so, CCG is so much, CCG is so much cooler. It's not like a work <laughs> name, though, by the way. So, so, bef so what I realized is MOBA community is really hard to accept, um, like, accept, uh, what do you call that? Multi-game? Like, not multi-game, but, uh... Another MOBA? You know, yeah, yeah. You know how there are a lot of YouTubers who do different game playthroughs, like yeah. walkthroughs, all that kind of stuff? So there are a lot of content channels who do that and do really well. But if you, I, it, it, in the end, Liz, recently actually, when I started doing more research, I found out all those channels who are big, they do PC games. Like yeah. They do, they only do PC games. So it's really unlikely for those channels to do um, mobile games. They probably play Among Us, but Among Us is not, you know, or some just pop game at the time. But they don't really do mobile games. Like League channel, it's really hard for League channel to come to convert to anything else. But League, you know, uh, same thing as Mobile Legends. It's really hard for Mobile Legend channel to convert to anything else because mobile players have really, um, once they like a game, yeah, they need, like that game. Really, you like that game. <laughs> it, it's really hard for us to switch. Like, including like, it's really hard for me to switch. Actually, initially, the only reason I played OB was because ML never told. They specifically told me there was no pro opportunity for NA at a time. You know, and League and of Legends like, obviously okay. is massive in NA and. Yeah. So, um, so, that, 
Yeah, that's that's just my um, that's why I asked. But yeah, if you're gonna play Pokemon Unite, let me yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, pl <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm playing Pokemon. I'm playing it right now. You have I, switched? Yeah, I got a switch. I've been playing it. I, I played it How on like stream. It? I love it. I the only thing I what would love to change is yeah. the timer, or at higher ranks, no timer. No timer? How are you gonna? Like, who wins? Uh, by destroying the other teams by scoring. You know the base that never get destroyed, right? The the the. the oh really? Uh, that never gets yeah, destroyed. Yeah, you can't destroy that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, it's actually a good thing the way they designed it because it's different from other MOBA. Yeah, the, see, the, the benefits of that, you have to see the benefit of it. MOBA, a mobile game, have to stay casual. And then yeah, for the longest quit. time... People quit. Yeah, for, for the longest time, that question has never been like really solved because a mobile game is a complicated genre. You know, it's like a really... It's not a genre you just step in and be like, I'm going to be ca I'm gonna be like casual. You can't because it's a MOBA. But uh, like the game varies. Like doesn't matter how long, how hard Mobile Legends try to make their game like more aggressive early game, try to shrink the game duration. If the game lasts long, lasts long. You don't know how the dynamic dynamic of the game goes. Every game is different. That's why the game is fun. If you don't play the same hero, every game dynamic is different. But the genre genre is hard. And what Pokemon did is they said oh, we're gonna limit the time, so to ten minutes. So doesn't matter how hard it is, you're only gonna suffer for ten, 10 minutes, minutes. <laughs> at max. <laughs> And then, MX, right? You're not gonna suffer for anything longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> the 40 minute is, Mobile Legends games. Yeah, which is which is really good because for uh, Mobile Legends, you have 40 minutes, sometimes through an hour game, right? That's like just disgusting. Yeah. So the, the timer thing, 10 minutes, limit the time to 10 minutes, and you can have fun within the 10 minutes. And then, you, well, your goal is to try to score as much as you can. Yeah. Right? Within 10 minutes. Whoever scores more wins the game. And that's it. I think, like, the best thing I like about that game is. It tells people that, um, like, like I asked my girlfriend to watch the game for the first time. She never played the game before. Yeah. She know exactly what the game is all about after watching one game. Yeah, same. I, that, I, I ask people the same question, like, do you know what's going on in this game? And they say, yeah, but you fucking, yeah. You, oh, sorry. <laughs> you score. Yeah, you score. Like, like, if people understand exactly how to play the game in one game, I mean, at least understand the objective of the game in one game, that means you can attract new viewers. That yeah. means you can attract new, new players, players. That means yeah. the game is going to... Yeah, it's true the game is going to grow. The biggest problem I had was well, Rift is the game is not going to grow. It's going it's to be limited to a niche market. And then that's probably the position for the developer to begin with. That's probably what they wanted to do. But it's not good for content creation. And on top of it, the way how they handle the content creators are just really, really horrible and shady, you know? So that's the biggest problem I had with them. But the, the, it, the main problem with the, compared to all three games is Mobile Legends is trying to be casual, but it's still it's still a regular MOBA. Yeah. And then Wall Rift is way too complicated for any regular players to enjoy the game, especially considering people who have a job, who come home, who have school. Yeah. They just want to play a fun. twenty. They want to play it like not to be um, exactly. rude, but they like want to they want to sit on the toilet and play a quick game, maybe. Play a game. Yeah, that's why Supercell games are all very successful. You yeah. know, like they're literally toilet games. You sit on a toilet and play a game, and you're gonna have some fun. So, from, like. Pokemon, Pokemon Unite, I think, kind of, kind of, really grabs the, the uh, a, a very innovative way to find a solution for this problem. Like you're gonna play a mobile game, but you're gonna stay casual at the same time, and I like that, you know. And, and the quality of the game is really good. It's just right now there's a lot of pay-to-win element to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how they handle that. When, when, um, when I seen Tencent had uh, their hands on on the Mobile Legends, I thought. Pokemon made a really smart choice by bringing Tencent on because Tencent knows what makes a MOBA game toxic. So I think I think Tencent did a good job with the with the timer like you were saying and um, not being able to talk to the other team to your team um, is is a big one too. <laughs> not big, not your team. <laughs> I think that's, Dude, that's a... so frustrating, though. That I know, so I know. Frustrating, where you can't yell at them. I'm so I'm so used to being able to yell at the random teammates. Now I can't do it. I I, tr I added someone the other day, and in, in in thoughts that I could tell them that they were shit, but I couldn't. Yeah. You, uh, you can't. It's just, but it's so good that way. Mobile yeah, Legends. One. That's what. Ah, uh, here's my biggest problem with Mobile Legends, and I hope to God they fix it, because it's. <laughs> It's actually really, it's actually a really bad problem. Um, now, 
if someone is racist to me in Mobile oh. Legends, right? Yeah. Or or anything. If 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 I know that person in real life and I happen yeah. to match with them in a game. <clears throat> yeah. Now, oh, and this goes for anybody. Um and now I block them and I blacklist them. But I still yeah. can match up with them in a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They can still be I mean, on my team or I can be against them. Worse they're yeah. on my team. <laughs> Yeah, Worse, true, they're true, on true. your team. Um, so I think that I would love for the blacklist. Now, I think maybe this is why they haven't done it because small servers would probably suffer a lot. Um, but I would love to see blacklist have an option where it's like, do you not want to meet this player in a rank game ever again? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, that, but, that's give me a good suggestion. But they you will, know, like, yeah. what other suggestion? There's another suggestion I gave them that they haven't executed on, which which addresses the same issue, uh, is not showing names. So League of Legends has this, but they didn't do a very good job with it, which is like add a solo queue ladder. So like the solo queue ladder is gonna be completely solo queue, where no one, uh, when you step into the queue, the moment you step into the queue, when you ban pick phase, it doesn't show anybody's name. It shows yeah. player one, player two, all the way to player 10. That's what it shows you. And then once you get in the game, it doesn't show player name either. It doesn't even show names. So it like like Lee, there's there's one option Wall Rift that does that, right? League has the same thing. Where it doesn't show names, just show a character, right? You can recognize what it is. I mean the, this way you can just play the game without the worry about like, oh I oh, hate his this person, shit. this person yeah. hates me. Yeah. You just focus on the game itself. Like you don't know them, they don't know you. The only time when you realize who you play it with or play against is after this game finish. But see the thing is, this the biggest part about this um game it's going to reduce so much toxicity in the game to begin with because the foundation of the toxicity is there's so much the, the matchmaking is always going to be unfair you're always going to have people who are drastically underskilled compared to you right yeah. or drastically overskilled that's usually doesn't happen but it's usually that drastically underskilled compared to you and what happens is that's not on the same level as you that's why you can't rank up so what happens is um when you play trio that's or duo that's going to happen you play solo and you meet a trio or your enemy has a trio you have a trio that's usually what happens but imagine if that's not the case. If everybody is solo queue and it, the the matchmaking system have to match ten people in one uh, in one game, it's it's a lot easier for them to to like even up the game because it's individual, right? Like yeah. it's only individual matches, individual player. You're not coming up against the team. Have, yeah, it, like on the team base, like if the enemy has a trio and they're a trio on your side, it's really hard to balance the, like overall like the accuracy of the balance of the game. But you have 10 different seeds and then you analyze 10 different uh, uh, data points and finally to make to make sure that they're even. There are a lot more data to analyze, there are a lot more data for you to, to actually find a more balanced game. And obviously with that, and you can't you can't see you can't uh, see people's names, so you can't associate that player with, a uh, with that character with an individual player if they played bad. It's just a misplay. It's a lot more fair, it reduces toxicity, and then uh, it's gonna get faster queues, obviously. Yeah. And then obviously it's gonna help the streamers and players in overall. Like a lot of times when you don't wanna when you're getting on, you don't want to play a game, and you don't want to get on, like try, bother to get your friends online and play the game. You just want to have fun, but you also want to be a little bit more competitive than than uh, casual. Well, I think the solo queue ladder is going to solve that problem, but you know they never did that either. So a lot of stuff they can improve on. I um, think was... I think with um, with the new um, like owners of Mobile Legends, like um, there's a lot of changes happening, and I yeah. A lot of good changes too so um hopefully hopefully they make that change um well they have money now so yeah they're, biting, <laughs> they're, they're tiktok now TikTok. They, got, they, got, they got that tiktok money <laughs> yeah they got tiktok money they're they're not no longer just moonton they're no. now on the same level as tencent tencent moonton man yeah. i just i just if hope they can fix it bigger <laughs> if not bigger tiktok is is like it, is actually valued as one of the most valuable company in the world, ByteDance. Oh, really? I, the, the owner owner of TikTok. I don't know exactly how much they're valued right now. I have never compared them. But in China, I'll give an example. The uh, Chinese New Year, the Chinese celebrate Lunar New Year. They don't celebrate the, yeah. the Christmas New Year. Yeah, they, they celebrate the Lunar New Year. And what happens is they had a, uh, so China has a tradition where they do a, like, a, like a TV show, not a TV show, like a like celebration yeah. ceremony for the Chinese New Year Day. And what happens is on that day, TikTok sponsored a giveaway for 3 billion RMB. And that's, if you divide that by six, that's basically 500 million US dollars of giveaway for that one event. Wow. They did that, they did giveaway. 
so so all people who are online to interact with that giveaway was insane and the giveaway amount they're giving out is not like it's not like 10 bucks or you get ten dollar you get one dollar if you win no if they win they win like 15 20 dollars uh per pop and in china that's a lot of money like in us that's still decent right if you want to if you win 20 dollar cash that's, oh yeah that's decent. that's that's uh, a yeah. that's uh cool. lunch you know yeah so like that's a lot of money so like that they're giving out like that's how much money they like, imagine a company doing that much money as giveaway like what can you buy with 500 million dollars you know like that's more than <laughs> that's more than how much money i think they spend for purchasing the moon they know? could like, purchase Go ahead. They they could um, literally just um, kill Wild Rift if they wanted to with ads. Yeah, and... yeah. They they have they have more money than Wild Rift can ever imagine at this point. <laughs> Ten, TikTok has money. Like people are talking about this is a small company, small indie company. It's no longer a small yeah. indie company that developed Moonton. Uh, they all have mobile legends. This is a big big production company now. They have money. So that's why they they were talking to me about like. A big project for well, for Mobile Legend coming up uh, end of this year. It's just going to be community tournaments and M3 qualifier in North America. All of this are possible because of the take the, the Biden's uh, acquisition. The TikTok right? money, yeah, yeah, TikTok money. So I like uh, the. Um, did they get new skin developers as well for Mobile Legends? I don't know because um, uh, a lot I, of I've never been a big fan of skins. Really. I don't have money to buy them. <laughs> Too expensive. You just give away. All, just all give away. Diamonds, yeah, all the diamonds that the developer gave, me, the Moontown gave me, I, I used all of them for giveaways. It's kind of bad. I should, I should do more. Like, uh, I should buy more skin for myself. I, I, I shouldn't. Yeah, get yourself, get yourself giveaways. some skins. <laughs> see, see, the thing is, when I played a game growing up, I never bought too much like uh, accessories. The cosmetics, so gave yeah. Me, yeah, cosmetics. Unless it, unless it gave me actual stuff in game. Uh, what Like, when I play League, I've never, like, played a, about a few months of League. I played Dota for many, many years. I never purchased a single item that me just either. for if, for cosmetics. Um, for, like, for double experience card, all that kind of stuff, I'll purchase, right? For other stuff that helps me grow in game, I'll purchase. But for cosmetics, no, I've never done it. For Mobile Legends, the same thing. I will never buy, like, I used to be the person who never buy a skin unless it, unless. I play the hero, yeah, and I'm gonna use it. Same Plus, and also at the same time, if I have a really good skin for the hero, I will not buy a second skin that's good for it. So, for example, Saber. A Saber has two skins that I think are pretty decent. One is the epic skin, the uh, like where's the cop? I, I forgot what it was called. The Saber, uh, the, the yeah, the Saber Squad. Saber, saber skin, Squad, you know one, that, yeah. that one. Yeah. So the Saber skin and also the Legend skin are they're both pretty good. I have the Legend skin. And then I wouldn't, even though I can buy, I can buy the epic skin anytime, but I don't want it's it. Never gonna I would use never, it. I would never use that skin. Yeah. You know, so like it's just, so I'm never being a skin guy. And there's some people out there that are just, they like have every skin for that hero. They they don't, they don't use yeah. that hero. <laughs> they, they collect, they collect it. For them, it's like stance. They love it. But um, what I, I what I say to that is, a lot of people will will come out and say, oh Skinner or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but I think it's a free game. If you want to support the game, go ahead. If it gives yeah. you, if it gives you a ten minutes of of happiness a day, then sure, it's worth it. But <laughs> you know, um, there's a limit to it sometimes. Yeah, there's a limit to it. But uh, <laughs> um. Well I think that I think that will be uh, that be it for for me. My girlfriend. Yeah, man. No, now. thank you. I was about to say too. Um, thank you yeah. so much, man, for um, for literally staying longer than than I expected. Um, <laughs> for being fun talking. for being down to earth and being awesome and 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 just for doing the most for the mobile legends community, man. Uh, Dude, I think listen. I just had a first mover advantage, to be honest. Like for me. And then I came back, obviously, I still retain part of that advantage. I think you're an amazing content creator. I, I watch your stream, I think you put a lot of work in your production and stuff. Like that, not many streamers, like look at Zane's stream. Fucking webcam plus <laughs> gameplay, right? And then obviously, he, he, now he now Zane's doing pretty well. He, he's, uh, he got somebody to do some graphics for him. Yeah. Have, like a better overlay. For the longest time, it was just a webcam, uh, like a, like a what, what is it? A Logitech C920. 
plus that's uh, what I got. Uh, gameplay. <laughs> that's what I've yeah. got. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's what I used for many years until I switched to uh, DSLR cameras. So like, what I mean is, most streamers don't put a lot of effort in uh, in production, and I, I see I see very different from what you're doing here. So by the way, so if you haven't, uh, subscribe, follow, CCG, I mean CBG. Make sure you go ahead and do that. Come back at gaming. Yeah. So big shout out to you for obviously you know putting the effort and and obviously wanted to talk. Not too many people are interested in, in talking, you know, getting to know about news. People just want to see gameplays. Oh no! And for I, all the viewers, I, I, I want to um, going forward. I want to. Um try to interview like as many mobile legends content creators as i can um but obviously i wanted you to be the first one because you are the first you know uh mobile legends content creator that i watched so I'm, it's you know i bring it full circle and also this is my one year um on twitch this is Ooh. my yes yeah, my one year anniversary on twitch so it's uh are you only streaming on twitch yeah cu currently only streaming on twitch but uh, Why don't you multi-stream on YouTube also? Yeah, I'm going to multi-stream now. So I, I wanted to complete the one year, put as much okay, effort I as I can into this community on Twitch. And then, um, yeah. um, you know, maybe I'll do separate streams one day on, on YouTube and then multi-stream yeah. as when I can. But yeah. Right now, it's all, it's all multi-stream now. Twitch is on, Twitch as a platform is, um, like, I was watching a lot of, like, uh, analysis on this platform and they were talking they were saying a lot of facts that I wasn't paying attention to a lot of metrics yeah and now like if, if you look at it the whole platform itself it's um, it's kind of interesting it's an interesting spot so if you wanted to like grow a community overall like I, I think you shouldn't uh, limit yourself to twitch alone yeah the discoverability on twitch is very limited yeah Any no, streaming platform, ex exclusive streaming platform discoverability is pretty limited but if you if you do like multi stream especially Twitch, like one policy I never understand with Twitch is they, like I'm partner on Twitch. So I actually de-partner myself. Like oh I really? Asked them to took away the partnership. Yeah, because it makes no sense. I only the only reason I was partner was because uh, uh, Immortals. Like I was team captain Immortals, and then yeah. they Immortals partner with Twitch, right? So they partnered all of us, all the pro players. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, but I would never know what it meant until like later. People said you can only exclusively stream on Twitch. So like why? Because Twitch. <laughs> Like Twitch is not paying me. <laughs> I'm a full-time content creator, and it, like amount of like how much money you can make. By the way, Twitch community is always incredible. Like Twitch community, yeah. community is very different from any other platform. That's on why YouTube, I wanted to start Facebook, on Twitch. Yeah, like Twitch community is very uh, unite. Not united. In, what's a better word? Uh, More positive. What do you call it? Uh, I would say creator driven. Yeah. Like okay. they, they they watch the, they watch the stream because they like the creator more than just the gameplay itself. Uh, so, so what happens is, let's say you you pop, you're waiting you're waiting in queue for 20 minutes. The chance, let's say you're in game, you have 100 viewers. When you're waiting in queue, you probably still have like about 95 viewers. Like yeah. you know, you're not gonna have many viewers who leave. But on YouTube and Facebook, every YouTuber have the same problem. They don't like, want to hear you talk. You, yeah, you lose like 50 percent of viewer <laughs> when you're waiting in queue. You know, literally, like you you lose all your viewers. Like people just here to watch you play a game and they're they're done. Like your turnover rate is the, the highest you can see in, in across all platforms but at the same time that does give you benefit of getting discovered so Big more people right, come right? see you and if they like you they're gonna stay here so twitch doesn't have that benefit right twitch only have a limited amount of community um for um for 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 content creator to grow especially for mobile content creators because they don't really focus on mobile that much yeah i know um, one thing one thing i've yeah. seen though with mobile legends on twitch since i started like streaming it on here um is it started off slow but gradually the numbers um like they they disappeared yeah. for a little bit but they they've just gone uh, they've, they've skyrocketed again um yeah but multi-streaming is definitely on on the cards for me 100 percent. on the card yeah well I'll, we'll talk later about that yeah man please then. thank all you right. all right thank man. you for the talk thank you ccg have a wonderful night. Say hello to the girlfriend. Hope you have a beautiful day. And um, yeah. stay safe. Yeah, you too. Have, uh, shout out to your viewers. Shout out to you guys. And again, yes. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Shout yeah. out to Assassin Dave, everybody. Go follow him and sub to all his channels. Yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> See you, man.
See you, Dave, man. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful night, man. All right, yo. You know what to do. You know Assassin Dave's channels. Go give him a follow on, um, on Trovo, on YouTube, on Twitch. And if you're not, if you don't know Assassin Dave is, you're living under a Mobile Legends rock and I don't like you. Ha <laughs> ha